Oh jeez. I'm kind of nervous. Like, not kind of nervous. I'm super nervous. Let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Monica and this is my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. Or mostly I talk about books. But today, it's actually one of those days where I'm going to talk about things related to books that are not necessarily books. And that is the fact that I fucking hate readathon. Now, a disclaimer. Before anybody jumps at me, before anybody says that I hate people, I don't hate people that number one, make readathons. I really appreciate the time and effort that it takes to create something and also the fact that these readathons are actually created to bring the community together. And I really appreciate that and I don't want you coming at me because your favorite creator creates readathons and that or that you follow a readathon. I am not saying anything against people that create readathons or people that participate in readathons. Is that clear? Good. I am also not saying that people that create readathons do them with any nefarious like ideas in mind. On the contrary, like I said, I think their readathons are essentially created to bring us together to discuss things together to to create more of a community. That being said, I actually think readathons are detrimental to a lot of readers. There are readers that really thrive off participating in readathons. And then there are other readers like me where readathons actually suck for us. And let me explain to you why. Now, I want you to know that I had nothing prepared for this. It's just me sitting here talking and drinking out of my Slytherin cup because I feel very Slytherin today. So basically, here's the spiel. I participated in a 24 hour readathon recently and it sucked. Not the readathon itself, and the creator of said readathon, Elfie from Ballet and Books, is like my booktube best friend that I didn't know I had out there until I started this channel. And I decided to participate because I've always kind of wanted to do a 24 hour readathon until I did one and I realized how horrible it was for me. And let me explain to you why I feel that readathons can be detrimental to certain people. The number one thing I want to stress is that all of the things that I'm going to be talking about are things that have to do with me and the expectations that I put on myself. Nobody tells you that you have to read five books in 24 hours in order for a 24 hour readathon to be, I don't know, effective or anything. That is something that I put on me, but that is something that I put on me as a reader. And that is something that I put on me as an ambitious person that is also really competitive. So what happens to me during readathons is number one, I feel a lot of pressure to read. Like I'm talking, if I'm not reading during a readathon, I feel that I, I feel, I don't even know how to explain this, but I feel like I'm failing someone. I feel like, I feel guilty. Did I just spit bubble? Ugh. <laughs> I feel guilty that I'm not reading when I'm doing these readathons. And that means that I kind of forsake most other things in my life just to read. And that is very bad for me because I am not a sprint reader. I am not somebody that's going to sit down and read 500 pages in one go. That is just not me. In fact, to read a 350 page book, it takes me about 12 hours. So the idea of doing a readathon, a 24 hour readathon to see how much I can read, I know how much I can read in 24 hours. And that is usually around 150 pages. But because I set this time aside for reading, then it's like, that's not enough. You know, it's like that song, it's never enough. I'm not gonna sing it for you because um, I I'm already nervous doing this video. I don't want you to unsubscribe also because I'm tone deaf. But just, I know how much I can read in 24 hours. But when you add the whole idea of you have to read, let's see how much I can read, that means that I have to push myself. And it turns reading into a competitive sport. And reading is not a competitive sport, at least not to me. And when, 
what ends up happening is that I get into a reading slump because I force myself and I force myself and the reality is I'm not that person. I am not the person that reads a single book in one day unless that book is under 150 pages. I am not a fast reader. And that's another thing about these readathons is I feel that they're designed to see who can read the most, but the reality is a lot of booktubers and a lot of followers of booktubers we're just not fast readers. Again, I know it, like when I say that I'm not a fast reader and hang on, my hair's doing something. I know when I say that I'm not a fast reader, you're looking at me like, bitch, didn't you read 15 books last month? And yes, I did. And that's because I read every single day. I read little bits every day. I don't read a lot in one day. I just read tiny little bits in every day and at multiple times a day. So sometimes, you know, between my classes, I'll read two, three pages. And then before I go to bed, I'll read a hundred pages. And maybe, I don't know, it's, it's not that I'm a fast reader. It's that I'm a like concept. Is that, is that a word in, in English? Like it's, it's that I'm a really consequent reader that I read every day. That's the, that's the sole reason I finish books as fast as I do or as many books as I do. Not because I can sit down and read a bunch in one day. And I also, I, I mentioned this because all of this came from that one readathon and I, and I talk a lot about this in that one video, but I, I also am somebody that gets tired of reading and I'm also somebody that is a little bit older. I don't know if you can tell from the beautiful grays that are on my head, but I'm no longer 23, 24. I am a 32 year old woman who works more than full time and also who has a husband and who has her mother and her stepfather living with her during the quarantine time because it caught us here and we're all living together. And I also do have other hobbies and some of those hobbies take time. I'm not saying that in order to be at like achieve like greatness in a 24 hour readathon, you have to not be any of those things. Like I'm not saying that you have to be a 20 year old living at home with nothing to do. No, I, I'm pretty sure there are mom out, and dads out there and parents in general that can do a 24 hour readathon and read five books. But what I find is in my situation, like during that 24 hour readathon, I also had a conversation with my mom that lasted like three hours and I also had a conversation with my husband and I also had to do some uh, stuff because I'm a, um, I'm, I'm a freelancer so I had to do some taxes and there was a, a lot of stuff going on and I just didn't want to sit down and ignore all of those things because I put this limit to myself as to how much I could read in a single sitting. So I, I find that it just took away the joy of reading for me for a little while. And actually what ended up happening was that I got into a really bad slump. I am reading right now a book that I love and yet after 30 minutes, I don't want to read anymore because I'm just tired of it. And it's not the book. It's because I did a stupid 24 hour readathon where I set myself the goal of reading two books within 24 hours, which is not a crazy like ambition to have, but it is really difficult when you have other things going on in your life. And I did. And also when you're not that kind of reader, and that's the thing, I'm just not that kind of reader. And maybe you aren't either. And you're feeling like you should be because readathons are so popular on, on booktube and it kind of makes you want to do it. It makes you want to participate. I know, for example, I really wanted to do the owls readathon. I really did. But then I realized that I couldn't because like, I know that I could bend the rules a little bit and read certain books that I wanted, but that's the other thing about readathons because we're, 
this was all about 24 hour readathons. Now let's go into like the other kinds of readathons where it's like in this week, we're gonna be reading so and so books, and you have so and so prompts, and sometimes you have Instagram challenges and Twitter challenges, and I'm sorry, but no, that that's not for me. That really is not for me because again, it turns reading into a competitive sport, and it feels like if I don't finish these books, then I'm not good enough, or like. I just put so much pressure on myself to read because when I do my TBRs, I do my TBRs of books I want to get to, but not books that I have to get to. It's not like, like if I don't get to them, I failed at the blah, blah, blah readathon. And I know this is all in my head. Once again, I want to stress that the creators of readathons don't make them with this in mind. The creators of readathons make them for people to enjoy, for people to maybe pick up a book they hadn't thought about, to pe for people to share together. But that's not the experience that everyone has. And again, we have the time constraints of readathons. A lot of them like have, I don't know, maybe 10 prompts and then you have a week to read and I know you can double up on books and everything, but that's really stressful. I mean, for me, that's really stressful. And what ends up happening is I'm so focused on meeting the goal that I'm not focused on the enjoyment of reading. I'm not focused on enjoying the book that I'm reading. And, uh, well, that fucking sucks. Let's be honest. That, that sucks because I read as a hobby. I started this channel because this is my main hobby, because this is what I love to do, because without reading, I feel, I don't, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't reading. Well, I do know what I would do. I would probably be watching Netflix or binging YouTube. But still, I love reading and I don't like when it feels that I'm back in high school trying to enjoy a book but I have to finish so and so chapter by this week because we're going to discuss it in class and, and sometimes, for example, I recently read uh, My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier and I had to give that book time. That book deserved some time of thinking, of analyzing, of being able to, oh here's my cat. <laughs> Say hi, baby. So that book required some time afterward of like catharsis. It required time of catharsis. And I feel that if I was doing it for a readathon, I wouldn't have had that because I would have had to pick up the next book in order to meet my challenges. And again, yeah, you can pick shorter books. You can do this, you can do that. But you know what? That's not what I'm here for. I'm sorry, but it's not. I'm here to enjoy the experience of reading. I'm here to share with you the enjoyment of reading. And if readathons are a way for you to enjoy reading, then more power to you. But for me, they actually take away quite a bit of the joy of reading. And it turns into this thing where I feel like I have to meet challenges and do Instagram posts and do this and vlog because of course what are you doing if you're not vlogging your readathons you know during the during this whole week and again this is nothing against the owls readathon it just so happens that this is the readathon that is happening while i am making this video everybody's making owls vlogs and that puts pressure on you i actually originally had thought that i was gonna do weekly vlogs all like that was gonna be Every Monday, the first video I post was going to be a weekly vlog until I started weekly vlogging. And I realized that vlogging was just not for me because it puts pressure on me to read. Maybe this weekend I don't want to read. And I know, I know that that's okay. And I know that you guys as viewers are going to be okay with that. The problem is me. <laughs> problem the type of person that I am the ambitious person that I am is the problem and I don't want to create any more problems for myself so if you are like me 
and you don't enjoy readathons and you don't enjoy finding books that fit prompts and that's the other thing what if you don't feel like reading a book that but it fits the prompt and it's in your already like physical tbr what do you do do you go out and buy another book just because it fits the prompt like i i just i don't know and then i i was talking to somebody else and they were like agreeing with what i was saying and also the fact that some prompts are kind of so open to interpretation that you can read any book and uh then why do a prompt at all like i don't know man i don't like readathons that's just the whole point of this video here is that i don't like readathons and i don't think i will be participating in any readathon from here on out and if that is something that really irks you about my channel and if that is something that you really don't like then that's okay because there are so many other wonderful, wonderful booktubers that do wonderful readathons that will be more to your liking. But in my case, no ma'am. I'm sorry, but no. I think the only one that I might participate in, which I did participate in this year, is the Tom Topple, which was created by Thoughts on Tomes, I believe is her channel. I'll, I'll link her in the cards and down below. I like that readathon because I'm really scared of big books. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one book in that whole thing. And that's going to be like the two weeks that I read that big book. And if I finish it, great. And if I don't finish it, then that's great too. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Jeez, that that took a lot. I'm going to be on. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm kind of nervous about this video because I don't want it to come off as me hating on people that like readathons or that do readathons. And I know that I've said this over and over and over again, but I just want to emphasize so much that that is not the case. I don't hate on anyone that does anything that involves reading, except maybe, I don't know. I mean, there's some weird shit out there, but you know, just normal reading. I have a very active Im imagination and I, and I, and I used to watch a lot of horror movies, so I'm like thinking of bad things. But anyway, but if you're just reading like a normal person, <laughs> you know, like if you're just reading, I have nothing against that or whatever it is that you do. And if readathons really push you to read new books and to find new books, and also for people that, um, I know some people, well, we all like procrastinate and make excuses. And if readathons are a way for you to stop doing that and get out there and, you know, read, then more power to you. But in my case, the contrary is true because then I feel that I'm forced to do something. And I guess that inside I'm just a rebellious teenager and I don't want to do what people tell me to do. And if they tell me that I have to read these books in these five days, then that's just not going to happen. And, and again, I read when I want to and because I want to. And readathons take that from me in a way, particularly 24 hour readathons. I am never ever doing a 24 hour readathon ever again because I know how many books I can read in 24 hours and that is exactly half of a book that is 300 pages long. And that's really not impressive. And I know that it's not impressive. So there you go. That's, that's, that's how much I can read <laughs> in in 24 hours. If you ever if you ever wonder how much can Monica read in 24 hours, she can read 150 pages and sometimes not even that because it depends on the book. But yeah, that's my hot take on readathons. I don't enjoy them. I think that for a certain group of readers, they're really really helpful and really good. And then for a certain group of readers, they're actually very detrimental to the reading experience. Wherever you fall on that little spectrum of reading, it's fine. I'm just letting you know where I fall. And I fall on, I believe it's this side that I said, was the that readathons are detrimental to me. 
they are. That is this chatty book talk. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that I finished it and I keep looking and it's like, oh, it's like, I think this video is going to be under 20 minutes and I talked a lot. So mm, I feel great. Also, can we talk about my lipstick? Um, it's so cute. It's so cute. Oh, and my cup, my Slytherin cup. Look at that. Focus camera. There you go. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And then the back. This is actually a birthday present from my sister-in-law. And this is my favorite. Also, it's gigantic. It's like the size of my head. So this is what I use on Mondays when um, I really don't want to teach like tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday for me. I know this video is going up on Wednesday. I had another video planned on Wednesday. Oh, and it's going to be great because after this video, you're going to get a 24-hour readathon vlog where I talk about all of these things that I just talked about. So yeah, but in this video, it's just more condensed. And uh, let me have a drink. Hang on. They still look okay. I promise you I'm wearing so much makeup because um, I had a migraine this weekend. And then I also had an eye sty. Oh my god, can we talk about my eye sty for a moment? I had an eye sty and it sucked. And you're going to see it if you watch that vlog of me trying to read an entire book in 24 hours. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to Emo Monica, which is funny I say that while I'm wearing this lipstick. But I basically had to cover my face because I didn't want you guys to see the eye sty. So it, it's just absolutely rid ridiculous. So also, I hit 400 for subscribers. Like, <gasps> Who am I? Like, oh my god, you have no idea what this means to me. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry if this video makes you um, subscribe and then I'll get less. But that's okay because you know what? We'll get back up. We'll do it, girl. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for everybody that subscribed lately. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy these videos. This is me. This is... This is what... This is what you get. This is what you get when you come to this channel. Like a bunch of blabbering and misuse of words you, you guys know i'm an english assistant it's in my eye you guys know that i'm an english as a second language teacher like i should be ashamed of myself <laughs> anyway yeah that's pretty much it if you like this video please hit that like button if you have anything to say about readathons please leave a comment down below and if this is your first time Welcome, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will stay a while. Remember, uh, I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and sometimes I'll post on Tuesdays and Thursdays if I'm feeling a little saucy, but not on Saturday and Sunday because your girl need a rest. Okay? Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye! I still can't do the bye. My hair is just washed and I'm not like loving it but you know what i'm not gonna refilm this video i never refilm videos that's a lie i'd refilm once anyway <laughs> bye guys